All right, let's do this, Catalina. <laughs> when I was 9, 10, 11 years old, I remember lying down next to my grandfather um, in his, honestly, a little bit raggedy apartment, um, listening to him reminisce about all the topics under the sun from his you know, awkward m interactions with his oncologist, to his terrible dad jokes, um, to memories of his childhood back in Korea. But one story in particular continues to influence how I conduct my daily life, um, and it's one that I think captures his life and journey. Um, with a proud smile, he told me about the 1960 April Revolution, where he and his friends fought and protested for democracy under an oppressive regime. One of the first achievements of student activism in South Korean history. As one of its lead organizers, my grandfather led his university peers in a movement that would shape the nation's history forever. His stories demonstrating police and rallying his peers taught me that determination could spark national change. Um, admiring his civic responsibility and fierce activism for his beliefs, I listened with rapt attention. And years following, I looked up to him. I wanted to be that man. Um, I wanted to be him. Um, and um, I wanted to follow in his footsteps. Um, and while I yet did not know what I wanted to do with my life, um, I knew that I wanted to do something, something important, something significant for our community and something important for our world. Um, and that opportunity struck me in the sixth grade. Um, it was during a school assembly about climate change by a local environmental nonprofit. Um, and as a child, I was very fortunate to have parents who, during my vacations, my holiday breaks, um, took me to national parks, state parks. Um, I've been to 25 national parks over my 16 years of life, um, from Denali up in Alaska to Florida, um, to Everglades National Park down in Florida. Um, and I would like to take this moment to give a round of applause to my mom, who is here in the audience tonight. <laughs> but um, so naturally, it hurt me to see the devastating impacts of climate change on our environment, from ocean acidification to sea level rise and natural disasters. Um, and going home and after researching this topic some more, um, watching videos about individuals that had suffered from these disasters firsthand, um, and reading academic papers about global warming, I thought to myself, what are we doing here? Um, are we as a world incapable of coming together to sustain and ensure life for the next generation of humanity? Um, you know, I believe no matter what economic or political argument, I hope that the next generation, uh, posterity, can experience the same pristine areas of the planet that we currently live in today. Um, and so to, throughout my lifetime as a student um, and just a young person, um, I've, I've loved the environment, I've loved nature, um, and I wanted to do something about it. I desperately wanted to contribute to this issue. Um, I, like I mentioned, I began researching, looking on YouTube, on Wikipedia to learn more about what was going on today. Um, and I, I wanted to do something. I knew that this time was pivotal and this time was now. So I started I started a garden and a composting system in my own backyard. Um, I started to volunteer at the same environmental nonprofit that had presented to my school earlier on. 
Um, and as a volunteer and intern, um, I regained this love for nature um, and I conducted experiments about the effects of climate change, surveyed areas of endangerment for human activity, um, and helped restore marine habitats in beaches. But I wanted, I knew I wanted to do something greater, um, something greater with a greater impact outside of my immediate bubble. Um, and so when the opportunity struck for me in the seventh grade to run for student body president, I was simultaneously delighted, but at the same time scared out of my wits. Um, I was a very shy kid at that time, um, and I knew, although I knew I wanted to make a difference, um, I, I was terrified. Um, and I made a commitment to myself saying that, you know, even if this is a scary task to do, I wanted to meet just one new person every day hear their thoughts, their opinions, and their ideas on issues both local here at school and broad worldwide. Um, and what I soon began to realize was that my friends and I, um, our worries and hopes ended up becoming very similar. Um, and through this, I knew that I wanted to represent them. Um, I was gratefully elected as student body president that year, and I've continued to serve in student government as freshman, sophomore, and junior class president. Um, but what I loved about student government and what attracted to me in the first place was the true ability to make a difference in the perspective of students, to raise awareness and to ignite um, the ambitions of a young community. Um, it was student government, I really believe, is has the potential to change um, young people's visions and minds um, about topics and to motivate them to make change in their own um, communities here at home. Um, and so through my platform as my sc school student body president, I wanted to um, teach people about this issue that I cared so deeply about. I organized fundraisers for environmental causes like the wildfires in Australia and um, broadcasted weekly fun facts over our school's loudspeaker. Um, and to my surprise, classmates who were originally apathetic about my climate work began coming up to me to ask what they can do to contribute. People I didn't even know at school um, approached me in the hallways to share ideas about fun facts and to suggest if our school could do a climate strike. Um, and over time, I saw my school grow into this hub of environmental activism with science teachers and even the principal getting involved in the campaign. Um, and so with this incredible response from my school and my friends, and truly, honestly, an unexpected response from my perspective, I reached out to my mayor to see if we can expand this movement to the entire city. Working with her um, and having experienced the incredible power of education in inspiring my peers, I decided to found Climate Garden, um, a community garden focused on teaching youth about climate change, which has now been adopted in about 250 schools and has impacted tens of thousands of students through our environmental education curriculum, our food insecurity programs, and our global network of cl young climate advocates. Currently, we are working with our local congressional representative on drafting the Climate Change Education Act a bill to bolster environmental education curriculum for K-12 schools across America, which will contribute to our current work on making these issues known to our country's youth. Um, and although he isn't here with us today, I know that my grandfather's vision for a better world lives on in us, in this generation, everyone here in the theater tonight, um, and the youth of our nation. Um, and I hope that 
my story of trial and error, of incremental change, of being young, um, being 12 years old, but wanting to address and make an impact on the vast issues of this world. Um, I hope that it will uh, serve as a guide for you and anybody who wants to enact change in their communities. Because in today's age, I believe making change is, is not, to make change in today's society, it doesn't require money, it doesn't require fame, beauty, or higher education. Um, if you truly want to make a difference, it begins with you. Everyone here today begins in your families, with your neighbor, um, with the person sitting next to you right now, um, with students, the student who raises his hand for help in class, or the elderly citizen who needs assistance crossing the street. Um, but to solve the global issues of today's world, these massive global issues of hunger, homelessness, climate change, um, and this is not an issue we can tackle ourselves. We need to lean on each other and we need to listen to one another, especially those um, who have differing opinions from us. Um, our society today is divided, divided by race, divided by gender, political ideology, religion, but what I've come to learn through my experience as an environmental advocate and through my work with Climate Garden, our differences give way to the same hopes and dreams. We are not divided by our differences, rather they embolden us. They embolden us with the ability to provide new perspectives um, and they make us a unique part of one whole in this world. Um, and they allow us to contribute to this world with a different type of mindset. And so the power we have as teens, the power we have as adolescents is the thing that will drive this generation forward. Um, so start somewhere, start small, but I advise you to start now because slowly but surely with time and effort, your seed of hope will blossom into a forest of change and prosperity. Thank you so much.